It's Friday. In fact, it's eight o'clock in the morning on Friday. Fridays in the 60s and 70s was quite an exciting day because Sunday was fast approaching. Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, what happened? Medium wave was full of pirate radio stations. They all seemed to come on the air at 11 o'clock. Um, so Friday was exciting. You'd spend all week in the, like the radio and TV workshop, repairing tellies, of course, get them out of the way. But Friday afternoon, no one's around, transmitter on the bench, prepare it for Sunday. Um, so yeah, Fridays were an exciting day. The weekend was coming up, apart from roast dinners and all that stuff, Sunday lunchtime in the pub, uh, 11 a.m. Sunday, excellent time. In those days, the pub on Sunday lunchtime was only open between 12 and one, uh, sorry, 12 and two. So you didn't have long, do your pirating from 11 to 12, pack up your gear and get down to the pub and then spend hour and a half or whatever chatting about it. Great fun, or a couple of hours even. Sometimes there was a lock-in. Anyway, uh, oh by the way, I'm Ray from the Radio Workshop. This is one I've just finished here, a Bush DAC-10. Just got to put the back on. That's, uh, I'll turn that off. That's all done for a customer in Ireland, Irish Republic. So, the aerial, as I've said in all videos, the aerial for your pirate radio transmitter was always the giveaway. Now, one chap had an idea. Um, he had this friend who, at the end of his garden, had a brick-built workshop, really nice. He was into wood and stuff. He had a wood lathe and all the, the wood gear. You know, he was into woodwork. Uh, but the point is, he had power in his workshop at the end of the garden. Now, three, I think, or four houses along from his, there was an empty house. The people there had moved away and it was for sale, but it was empty. Now, we didn't do any breaking, breaking in town, you know, breaking and entering, you don't do that. We didn't do that, because um, that was illegal. We didn't do anything illegal, <laughs> good grief. <laughs> anyway, um, the idea was to put an area up in the garden of the empty house. Great idea, you're probably thinking. But what's the point? Because you've got to get, okay, there it is, down four houses along or whatever. There it is, going to the tree and then wherever, you've got to get it here to the transmitter. You know, is it going to be here? There's no good having it in the air. What happened was, the plan was, aerial from the, the house down to the tree, at the back of this, uh, the row of houses, was an alleyway, all right? Sort of access type alleyway. And then to go down to the tree and then run it about four feet above the ground through all the bushes, okay, along the back of the gardens and then into this chap's workshop. Yeah, what sort of aerial is that going to be? How is that going to work? You know, when, when what, 100 feet or more of it is in the bushes? OK, then you've got the vertical bit, then the horizontal bit. I don't know how long the garden was, 80 feet, 70, 80 feet, I don't know. So the plan was good. If you look at the aerial, you know, you can't see where it, it goes. It's like four houses along. But uh, what sort of signal are you going to get, you know, so we did an experiment one Sunday. We did, no it wasn't, it was in fact, it wasn't Sunday. I remember it was Saturday. I remember it was on a Saturday because pirates weren't around on Saturdays, well not normally, so people wouldn't be tuning around. All we did was put out a test tone. Um, and we drove around and listened at various locations and it was a really good signal. It was surprisingly good. Um, I, what I did, I sort of roughly measured the length of the aerial and tried to work out where the current would be. Because, as you probably know, the current is your maximum current, that's maximum radiation. Uh, where the, the high voltage is, isn't, uh, doesn't radiate too much. So I was trying to work out where the maximum current would be. And I forget the length, um, but it did work out that uh, it, was, it wasn't all in the bushes, all right? Uh, it was a lot of it in the bushes, but a lot of it was in the vertical and the horizontal bit as well. Uh, so, right, that's that. It was a really good signal. We went on the air for the next few Sundays or whenever it was, and uh, good reports. Excellent. Um, no problems with anyone turning up, which was surprising, because we, we, you know, we were putting out the good signal. That, that, actually, that reminds me. Uh, one chap I knew, he was power mad. Right, the bigger the transmitter, the better. And I remember him saying, uh, how come you've got such good coverage with your silly 
little transmitter. I used to call it that silly little transmitter. We know always ran between sort of 10 and 20 watts. And it wasn't a silly, it was a little transmitter, but it wasn't silly. <laughs> uh, we had very good modulation. We did anode and screen, or as in the US, as you'd call it, plate and screen modulation. And of course, running, say, 15 watts, you only want like 7 or 8 watts of audio. Whereas this chap, he, oh, he'd have, you remember the 813s, the 813s, the big valves? He had a couple of these in parallel and, you know, huge modulator and everything. And he ran a lot of power. Um, and I remember him saying, how come you've got a good signal with your silly little transmitter? Uh, and I never seem to have a, a you know, I should get a lot further. I never seem to get anywhere. It was all down to the aerial. Uh, my, you know, his philosophy was loads of power and the aerial doesn't matter. Ours was a uh, minimal amount of power and a decent aerial, uh, which I think is the way to go. So anyway, well, I forget where I was now. Oh yeah, so the GPO did turn up. Now in the house, we were looking out of the front window and this chap's bedroom was at the front. We we're looking out the front, you know, neck curtains, like little old lady, ladies spying out. And the GPO van pulled up outside the empty house. Okay, the, the lads got out, and they're looking around, usual stuff. Um, and we're behind the curtains, sniggering. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're sort of walking up and down the street found the way round the back of the houses. As soon as they started doing that, what we did was switch off the transmitter. Um, and the, now the aerial wire from the workshop, going all the way through the bushes, what we did, pull it all in, okay? Where it went to the base of the tree to go to the vertical bit, it was just twisted. So pull it, and that's that. The vertical bit stayed there. We reel our lot in, okay? So the, the GPO lads around the back, and of course, we're now looking out of the back window and they're pointing up this, the aerial, doo -doo -doo, and uh, the back gate was locked. So <laughs> we're looking out of the back window now, sniggering. One of them clambered over the gate uh, and he's in the garden. And, you know, they're obviously, I don't know whether they realised the house was empty or not. I mean, there's a for sale board outside. Um, but anyway, they're, they're in the garden. He opened the gate and let his mate in, just slid the bolt, let his mate in. So they're both in the garden. Um, and we, what we found out later, one of the neighbours called the police. Here we are, this is becoming my trademark, the, the appearing and disappearing coffee cup. So, yeah, the, the police turned up. In the, remember the Morris Thousand, little Morris Thousand, the panda cars, blue and white, what kind of turquoise and white, police written on the side, parked outside the empty house. They must have realised it was empty thinking about it. Um, so the police went round the back uh, and confronted, we couldn't hear what they were saying, but it seemed like they were confronted the GPO men. The GPO pointed to the aerial and they obviously said, no, you know, we're not burglars, we're not robbers. You know, we've come here to catch the pirates. So they're all in the back garden milling around. Um, and I don't know, uh, half an hour, an hour went by, I don't know how long, um, the police went off and they came back, uh, which we thought a bit odd. The GPO bloke sat in the van, had a fag, as you do, or as you did. Um, and then this other chap turned up in an ordinary car and he let everyone in the house. Now he must have been, we reckoned he was the estate agent. Okay, so he had the key to the house. He let the police in and the GPO blokes in. Uh, they all went in the house and they were only in there minutes, a matter of minutes, and they all came piling out again. Now the reason they were only in there for a matter of minutes was because the aerial, what, what had happened was take it to the gutter, okay, and then down what the chap had done that put the aerial up, just poked it in the window frame. So it looked like it went in to the window where the transmitter was in the room. And of course the, the GPO blokes were obviously convinced that the pirates were in the house, the transmitter is in the, the top room at the back. Uh, of course, they must have gone in there and looked and, oh, empty room. Wire doesn't go anywhere. Excellent. So eventually the police disappeared. The GPO blokes were around the back alley. They're looking, they're walking up and down. They're looking at the backs of all the houses. Uh, they knew, they must, they weren't daft. They knew that someone, somewhere was watching them. The guilty party, the pirates. <laughs> Happy days. And we were watching them. Um, we're careful not to 
twitch the curtains and stuff so they could see us. Uh, of course, they couldn't. You can't get a search warrant to search all, every house in the whole row. You know, they obviously knew what was going on, but they disappeared, um, and that was that. It was a successful few weeks, and uh, again, no one got caught, and it was all down obviously to the planning. We used to spend hours in the pub drinking, yeah, but planning as well. Uh, I do remember there was a in Worthing there was a club called the Karaoke Club, Karaoke. I'm getting old. It's not there now. Karaoke, that's it, in Worthing. And we used to go there. It was open till like two in the morning, you know. We, we often went there on a Friday night. Uh, you know, it's great fun. They had live bands and things. But what we used to do was get there early, grab a table and sit there planning things, aerials and stuff. And I remember a mate of mine saying, oh, aren't we gonna pull any birds? And no, no, I'll worry about that later. We're working on the aerial. Actually, I do remember one evening up at the bar, I was uh, getting a drink, and there was this girl, very attractive girl next to me. She said, oh, you're going to buy me a drink then? And, OK, yeah, fine. We've done all our aerial business. I said, yeah, fine. I've got a whatever, vodka and something or other. And uh, I'm just paying for this. And this bloke came and stood next to her, and she said to him, oh, this chap just bought me a drink. And he said, oh, that's nice of you. Cheers, mate. It was her boyfriend. I said, yes. <laughs> right, <clears throat> moving on. So it was all down to the planning, uh, you know, getting the aerial right. And as I said previously, you, you can go two ways, loads of power and a naff aerial, right, or a smaller transmitter and a, a decent aerial. And that's, that's what it was all about. Um, it's, it's, it's pointless having hundreds of watts. It's rather like uh, I remember a friend of mine, he built a, an audio amp, a nice valve audio amp, really nice. And he put a lot of time and effort into it. And he had NAF speakers. You know, what's the point in that? <laughs> There's no point at all. And it's the same, you know, big fat transmitter and a, a NAF aerial. What's the point? Uh, our modulation was, as I said earlier as well, modulation was always good. And we didn't splatter all over the medium wave band. We kept the audio narrow. You know, we kept it narrow, so I, we didn't have anything posh like a, an Optimod. Who remembers the Optimod? Never owned one, but lovely piece of gear. Um, but, you know, we did uh, with filters and stuff. We kept the audio narrow so we didn't splatter everywhere. Because that was another thing the GPO didn't want. People wiping out half the medium wave band. Talking of aerials, uh, there's a, another time. There's a river not far. Well, there's two rivers either side of uh, where I am. Uh, one of the rivers, we, we went out there, we put this vertical aerial up in this field, this kind of farmer's field. This is a story for another time, really, but just briefly. Uh, there was a sort of a derelict barn next to it, and we put the vertical up. Um, didn't go too mad with radials, radials and stuff, because, you know, the farmer, well, we would have been seen, and it was a quick, quick aerial up job. Coax, okay, to the base of the aerial, and a little sort of home-built <coughs> matching unit. OK, so that we could feed it with coax. And what that meant was, there's the aerial, there's the coax. We, we were the other side of the river. Now, at this point, the river wasn't too wide. Stone on the end of the coax, threw it over the river. OK, so the coax from the little tuning unit at the base of the aerial, down the bank, under the water, <laughs> and up the other river bank, the other side, into the bushes where we were, with, you know, the usual, the car battery, uh, all the gear, the transmitter, the cassette tape recorder. Um, this, yeah, story for another time, really, but uh, briefly, <laughs> the GPO didn't turn up, but the farmer did. Um, he had a, his shotgun, you know, broken over his arm, and he's looking at the air and shaking it. It was one of these military-type air, you know, the telescopic things, um, with a guy, we got those from GWM Radio. Oh. Anyway, he's, um, he's looked, he found the wire, the coax, and he's, he's sort of pulling it to see where it goes. It's coming up out of the river. We're disconnecting it from the transmitter. Um, we're, and then we're gathering up our stuff, and you know, we're going to do a runner. I mean, he wouldn't have shot us, but we just thought you know, he might blast us from the other side of the river. So uh, he's shouting, Oi, what are you doing over there? Yeah, OK, yeah, we lost the aerial, which was a shame. Um, we ran back to our car and and sort of uh, made our escape. 
uh, yeah, the aerial we got from GWM Radio in Portland Road. So uh, you probably heard of that. I mean, it was known all around the world, GWM Radio. Uh, that's another story. I've got a few stories to tell about that place. Excellent. They sold all the transmitter bits, you know, big uh, variable tuning capacitors and valves, huge transmitting valves. You name it, you could get it there. All army surplus gear, 19 sets, everything. But there we are, that's for another time. Yeah, the idea of the field, when we thought the GPO turn up, we could laugh at them from the other side of the riverbank, would wave at them and then run off. But uh, the farmer turned up instead. There we are. I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. You know, recalling all these times uh, from the, the old days, the good old days, it, it's great. Uh, memories keep flooding back, but I've got to stop somewhere. So, uh, yeah, there's loads more I can think of. As I've said before, we weren't pirating every Sunday. This is over a number of years. You know, this is the odd Sunday over a number of years. So, you know, we weren't kind of serial pirates. Well, not quite. Anyway, thanks for watching as always. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you again soon. Bye-bye.